France, first country to make abortion a constitutional right. Thousands of South Korean doctors stage mass demonstration. Pakistan heavy rains collapse buildings and trigger landslides. Canada reimposes visa requirement on Mexican nationals. Death toll rises to 10 in Russian drone strike on Ukraine's Odessa. Doom, part two box office with $81.5 million debut. Hello, I'm Wade Lee. Thank you for joining us on Funday News. It is Tuesday, March 5th, and here are your top stories. French lawmakers approved a bill that would enshrine a woman's right to an abortion in the French Constitution during a historic joint session of Parliament in the Palace of Versailles on Monday. The bill was approved in an overwhelming 780 to 72 vote, and nearly the entire joint session stood in a long-standing ovation. There were jubilant scenes of celebration all over France as women's rights activists hailed the measures promised by President Emmanuel Macron following a rollback of abortion rights in court rulings in the United States. Pour l'adoption, 780. Contre, 72. Both houses of parliament, the National Assembly and the Senate, have already adopted a bill to amend Article 34 of the French Constitution to specify a woman's right to an abortion as guaranteed. In the lead-up to the historic vote, Prime Minister Gabriel Attal addressed the 925 lawmakers gathered for the joint session in Versailles and called on them to make France a leader in women's rights and set an example in defense of women's rights for countries around the world. The right to an abortion has broad support among the French public. A recent poll showed support at over 80 percent, consistent with previous surveys. The same poll also showed that a solid majority of people are in favor of enshrining it in the Constitution. Thousands of senior doctors rallied in the South Korean capital, Seoul, on Sunday to express their support for junior doctors who have been on strike for nearly two weeks over a government plan to sharply increase the number of medical school admissions. The rally came as the government said it would begin to take steps Monday to suspend the doctors' licenses of nearly 9,000 medical interns and residents for defying government orders to end their walkouts, which have disrupted hospital operations. Protesters chanted slogans, sang and held placards criticizing the government's plan. There were no reports of violence. According to the health ministry, as of Thursday night, 8,945 of the country's 13,000 medical interns and residents were confirmed to have left their work sites. The striking doctors are a fraction of South Korea's 140,000 doctors. However, they account for 30 to 40 percent of the total doctors at some major hospitals, where they assist senior doctors during surgeries and other treatments while training. Their walkouts have subsequently caused numerous cancellations of surgeries and medical treatments at the hospitals. Senior doctors have staged a series of rallies backing the young doctors but haven't joined the walkouts. If they also launch strikes, observers say that would be a major blow to South Korea's medical service. Prime Minister Han duk Su on Sunday urged senior doctors to persuade the striking junior doctors to return to work. Heavy rains that swept across Pakistan have left at least 36 people dead and 50 people injured, collapsed houses and triggered landslides that block roads, particularly in the northwest. Mostly women and children were among 30 people who died in the rain-related incident in the scenic Swat Valley. The Khyber district and also in the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province bordering Afghanistan since Thursday night. Five people died in southwest Balochistan province after floods swamped the coastal town of Gwadar, forcing authorities to use boats to evacuate people. Sarfraz Bugdi, the chief minister in Baluchistan, said Sunday that 700 homes had been damaged. Authorities were sending emergency relief and heavy machinery to remove debris blocking highways. The country's Karakoram Highway, which links Pakistan with China, was still blocked in some places due to landslides triggered by rain and snow, according to the spokesman for the northern Gilgit Baltistan region, Faisullah Farak. He said the snowfall was unusually heavy for this time of year. Authorities advised tourists against traveling to the scenic north due to weather conditions. Last week, several visitors were stranded there because of heavy rains. Pakistan this year has witnessed a delay in winter rains, which started in February instead of November.
The immigration minister announced Thursday that Canada's government is reimposing the visa requirement for Mexican nationals visiting Canada. Quebec's premier has been urging the Canadian government to slow the influx of immigration, which he says has been straining resources. The U.S. government also urged Canada to take action as some Mexicans have been crossing illegally into the U.S. from Canada. Immigration Minister Mark Miller said that the new rule takes effect late Thursday. He added, We have seen exponential growth in asylum claims, particularly from Mexican nationals, in the last year. Miller said Mexico accounted for 17 percent of all asylum claims received by Canada from around the world, and said most claims from Mexico are either rejected, withdrawn or abandoned, so a change was needed. Trudeau's government lifted the visa requirement for Mexican visitors in late 2016, removing a major irritant in relations between the two countries. But Immigration Department data show asylum claims from Mexico have spiked dramatically. In 2015, there were only 110 such claims, but the number jumped to nearly 24,000 last year. The Quebec government has been calling on Ottawa to reimburse 1 billion Canadian dollars, $740 million, the amount the province has said it has spent on a growing number of asylum seekers. Miller said that Canada's relationship with the U.S. is also a factor. The death toll from a Russian drone strike that destroyed an apartment block in Ukraine's southern port city of Odessa on Saturday has risen to 10. Ukraine's interior minister reported the rescue workers on Sunday morning retrieved the remains of an infant and the baby's mother, raising the number of children killed in the attack to three. On Saturday, Ukrainian authorities reported that a baby was among those killed after falling debris from an Iranian-made Shahad drone hit the apartment building, one of eight Russian-launched drones. Russia has launched several thousands of these long-ranged wing drones throughout the war at targets across Ukraine. Local Governor Ole Kuyper said that rescue workers continue to comb through the site, and regional authorities announced a day of mourning for the victims. Elsewhere in Ukraine, Regional authorities reported that a 58-year-old man died under rubble after Russian forces shelled his village in the southern Kherson province. Zelensky called on Western allies to boost Ukraine's air defenses in the wake of the deadly attack. Zelensky said, delays in the delivery of weapons to Ukraine, as well as air defense to protect our people, unfortunately result in such losses. Ukraine has never requested anything more than what is necessary to protect lives. Ukraine is currently struggling for resources as the war grinds into its third year with a $60 billion aid package held up in the United States Congress. Movie theaters were looking for a savior, and Dune Part 2 is delivering on the promise. Armed with sandworms, big screen spectacles, and the star power of Timothy Chalamet. According to Studio Estimates Sunday, that Denis Villeneuve's science fiction epic stormed the North America box office this weekend, earning $81.5 million in ticket sales. Internationally, it's earned $97 million, bringing its global debut to $178.5 million. It's the first major hit of 2024, and one that was sorely needed by exhibitors. Although there has been holdovers from December that have continued to earn, like Warner Brothers Wonka and Sony's romantic comedy Anyone But You, the box office is in a bit of a drought. In the first two months of 2024, no films have crossed $100 million domestically. The highest earning movies have been The Beekeeper, Bob Marley, One Love, and Mean Girls. Dune Two Inches rode a wave of great reviews, 94% on Rotten Tomatoes, into a marketplace that was essentially free of competition. Warner Brothers released it in 4,071 locations in the US and Canada, where audiences across the board gave it the highest post track marks and an A Cinema score. According to exit data, men accounted for 59% of opening weekend ticket buyers and 64% were over the age of 25. The sequel was primarily financed by Legendary and its production budget, previously reported to be in the $122 million range, is closer to $190 million. The answer for yesterday was A. Signal. The scandal surely signaled the end of his political career. Did you answer correctly? Now let's delve into the news of France, first country to make abortion a constitutional right. Number one, enshrine. Ba Fa Lu, Chen Li Den, Feng Wei Shen Shen. His new relationship with Germany is enshrined in a new non aggression treaty. Number two, overwhelming. Ju Da De. The overwhelming majority of those present were in favor of the plan. Number three, jubilant. Xi Qi Yang Yang De. 
Before his eyes was a sea of jubilant people. Next, we have a multiple choice question for everyone to practice. Which answer would you choose? You can write your answer in the comments section and the correct answer will be announced tomorrow. And that's it for today's Funday News. Be sure to tune into Funday News from Monday to Friday and click the link below to join Funday for free. I'm Wade Lee, your host. I'll see you next time.